How's it going, YouTube? It's Corleone from Lightcast Studios. In today's episode, I'm going to I'm going to show you how to get fantastic quality on your videos using Premiere Pro. Now, usually using Adobe programs means having humongous video files. Now, the reason being is because After Effects and or programs like uh, Cinema, 4, Cinema 4D or whatever programs you're using are meant for importing into major programs like Premiere Pro. So if you're editing with After Effects, you shouldn't edit the, edit the entire video with it. You should import it into a program like Premiere Pro. So we have a video sequence here. It looks a little complicated, but it's really simple, actually. I have all my Fraps files right here, and I have my watermark above it. So I have my watermark right here. And I also have um, video effects applied to each one of these, as you can see here, color correction and whatever. So if we view our file, it's going to look really nice in our pr preview. And this is actually the raw file from our video. It doesn't have any pixelation or any errors, regardless of it being Minecraft. Um, but when we import it, we usually run into problems where it's going to look a little blurrier. And the more you render a video file, the more blurry it gets, the more pixelated and out of detail the video gets. So to get the maximum quality, um, without screwing up your entire computer. If you have a good computer, you have to have a good computer in order to even run Adobe Premiere Pro CS5. Um, you have to export the file. So we're going to export the file as a MP4. So we're going to go to File, Export, Media. Now we have the media window opened right here. And we choose our output wherever we want the file to output. We're going to choose the comments or whatever. And the best format to have is H.264, which is actually the MP4 format, if you didn't know that already. MPEG-4 um, is a little bit differently different, but this is actually for small videos for use in like phones and things like that. So if you want the best quality for your YouTube or whatever, use H.264, and you make sure that the video is set correctly to whatever you like. It doesn't matter what frame rate you have. You can uncheck it and do whatever setting, 640 by 480 or 640 by 360, so on and so forth. And depending if you're European standard or if you're American or US standard, you use NTSC for USC or USA or Japan, um, or you know, PAL for usually used for Europe and stuff like that. Now we have our frame rate. Usually the video records in a certain frame rate. It had 60 frames per second, but I was recording it in 30 frames per second, which is the normal viewable eye. So we're going to click 29.97. If you have anything lower or anything higher than the frame rate the video is recorded in, you may run into some errors with the rendering. Now, the reason being is the frame rate can be different. So if you have a higher frame rate and you have a smaller frame rate set here, it'll record in slower motion than the video playing. Um, so it'll look a little bit different, maybe blurry. You also have to check render at max depth. So it says check to do rendering at max bit depth. This improves render quality with degradation to encoding speed. Now what that means is basically it takes a little bit longer for you to encode. Now this is where the bulk of everything comes in. If you have this set to really low, the bit rate of the video will look a little bit more degraded. However, if you want a large file with a high quality amount of um, data and uh, really nice looking uh, details on the video you want to have the highest for all of it now this will make the rendering 8.9 which is 9 gigabyte file for a one hour video which is really good um, for Premiere Pro or Adobe in general I was actually scared when I was rendering the video that it was going to be a 50 gigabyte file or something like that but if you use Premiere Pro it's going to take a lot longer but it's totally worth it. It took me 11 hours to render this video. Um, I had it running overnight, and it looks fantastic. But if you prefer having a fast bit rate and a uh, smaller file, you'll see that the file got smaller, but it, and it'll also be a lot shorter to render the video. Um, it prefers on you. So however good you want the video to be depends on how high or low the bit rate is for the target and maximum bit rate megabytes per second on how fast the data is encoding on the video. Check your VBR pass. Um, don't use free previews. And also, the the video gets blurrier if you use frame blending. Now, the reason why you use flame, frame blending is what I was talking about with the frame rate. If you have a video that runs at 30 frames per second, but the frame rate set to the encoder is set to 15 frames per second, you will have very, very bad looking video. Or not bad, but much choppier looking. So frame blending helps make transitions look smoother between between each frame, so it runs more like an animation. But it does make it look more blurry because it's blending the frames rather than letting them run choppy as they were before. So make sure you have the frame rate set correctly, and make sure you do not use frame blend, blend uh, blending 
on your video. Once you're ready, you click export and the video will render. Make sure it's set to custom or you can have it set to, um, if you mess something up, you just go back and click HDTV 720p, depending on whatever you like your um, project to be. And make sure it's H.264. Once that's all done, make sure you don't have Gaussian blur and anything. You just click export and you're done. If you guys had any questions about this video and if you guys really need some help, um, contact me through YouTube or leave a comment below and I'll try to answer it as fast as possible. Um, and also, if you want to render the entire video on Premiere Pro, you have to click entire sequence or work area if you want a small area or custom to select whatever size you want um, to be encoded and that will be imported into the output name wherever the output is on your video. Again, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, and until next time, this is Lightcast Studios, and thanks for watching. See you guys next time.